This week on Maker Update, an LED filament clock, a pool noodle robot rover, a screen that screams back at you, a motorized flippy crawler, seven vintage toy robot designs you can 3D print, a project packaging generator, and a mini metal chop saw. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I spent this past weekend working on my own Let's Robot build, which has been a fun challenge, but it's not done yet. I'll let you know when it's up and running. I have another jam-packed show for you, so let's get started with the project of the week. Check out this LED filament clock by Andy Pugh. Have you ever seen those LED versions of Edison light bulbs? Well, this project collects 28 of those filament-looking LEDs and turns them into a clock display. The numbers seem to magically float in the air, but each digit is actually connected to a thin web-like wire, and Arduino sits in the base along with a custom circuit. But as pretty as it is, there's a risk of shock here because the design needs 80 volts to drive those filaments and that electricity is wired right into the bare metal frame. There's an isolating DC to DC converter and power supply in this design that should minimize the risk of shock, but still attempt at your own risk. For something safer and a little easier, the Ruiz brothers have this Cricut controlled pool bot. The design uses 3D printed parts, two small DC motors, a Playground Express, and a Cricut breakout board. You can program routines using Microsoft's Make Code Editor. Two things I love about this design are the standard threaded camera mount they included for attaching an underwater camera, and the frame for the pool noodle sections. Last week we took a look at Greg Zumwalt's awesome 3D printed paddle bot, which required some adhesives to seal up, but integrating pool noodles is another great option and even allows you to scale the design a little wider if you want. Also on Adafruit, for something silly, check out John Park's guide for making this interactive screen painting. Ah! The design mounts the screamer's face on a servo arm. When you scream at the painting, it triggers a scream sound to play and wiggles the head back and forth. Not only is this a fun project on its own, but I think you could easily apply it to a Halloween project and make some sound-activated plastic rats or spiders. Over on Thingiverse, Makeroni posted this design of a Flippy the Robot, it's a simple, single motor toy design that just stomps around, but I love the minimalist look. I also discovered a treasure trove of toy robot designs by Robot Hut. In the show notes, you'll see seven different motorized toy robot designs that are all nods to vintage sci-fi bots. I think it would be cool to build a few and maybe give them out as presents. I have a few tips to share this week. Tiffany Zhang, who made that Stencilfy app I showed you last week, is back with another free app that automatically generates boxes for your 3D printed things. So if you did want to make a custom cardboard box for one of those toy robots, you just upload the STL file or plug in the dimensions manually, and you get a template for all the cut and fold lines to make your box. Over on MakeZine, professional maker Sean Thorson has a quick guide on making casting molds using silicone. Also, Gareth Bramwin's Tips of the Week column takes a look at using crayons as part of a colorful wood finish. And the Cool Tools blog has just published my review of the Clutch Angle Grinder Holder, which is an inexpensive jig that turns an angle grinder into a mini metal chop saw. I used it for building my latest Power Racing Series car this year, and it's worth checking out, especially if you have a small workshop. Maker Fairs. Tragically, there are no Maker Fairs happening this weekend that I'm aware of, but next week we have Singapore, Seattle, Washington, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. We also have World Maker Fair in New York coming up on September 22nd and 23rd, which I'll be going to. And for those of you in the Bay Area, the call for makers is open for East Bay Mini Maker Fair happening on October 21st. And as always, you can visit makerfair.com to find a fair in your area. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave me a thumbs up, or leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone's supportive feedback. You can also get on the Maker Update email list, which gets you show notes sent out to you automatically every week. And if you really want to make my day, you can buy me a coffee using the Buy Me a Coffee link down here, all right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.